I walked some evenings, some some evenings I would walk from the point waterfront yeah. to a new lens. Because I'm saving the low that I have to be able to buy meals for Ekai so that my siblings go to school. Yeah, yeah. So I'm very proud of who I am. I People can call me broke or whatever the case may be. I know that I'm not broke. So there are aspects of my life um, that I will never reveal um, that are between myself, my Is, family. And we became um, and who God. we are because of that past and that history. Mm. We became strong women mm. because we know who we are. Our fundis and all of that, I mean, I heard the, the audible voice of God. It wasn't the decision. On the it was decision. Decision. It was a decision. That's that one, yeah. <laughs> like Christ himself. What was that about? Yes. I don't even so know. So you can't know. just trust um, the person who was able to initiate a relationship with your husband knowingly and trust them with your life with your kid a fancy restaurant um in a beautiful place in south africa and he left you with love them seven love them Ooh, babe he's not circumcised <laughs> <laughs> i meant our sex, our sex. I, mean, I already do it yes will it marry what you say you're doing which is the show is Engineer Your Life and I'm Lungelo KM. It's the first episode in a series of episodes where we are going to be speaking to amazing women, which is very fitting since it is Women's Month. So happy Women's Month if you are a woman and you are watching this episode. Um, today I have a very special guest. Uh, Jeez, you know her. If you don't know her, because what do you mean? Where do you live? Which rock do you live under? But firstly, I want to get something out of the way. You know, um, as we continue growing this podcast, we have surpassed 1 million views, right? Which means we're somewhere around 1.1 million views right now. I don't know. We're there. We're not really checking for that because it's all about the content and about giving you guys good content, quality content. But in order for us to be able to do that, we need you to subscribe. Less than 10% of you are subscribed. Imagine, that's like shocking. So please subscribe. Please also join as a member. Like, guys, it's 999. We are Upuza. Anyway, I'm, I'm done shouting. My guest is Slee. How are you? Hi, good job, Lungen. I'm, I'm great. I'm fantastic. The sun is shining. That's yes. the beauty of Durban. The sun is always shining. It's amazing. Ne? Durban is the best city to be in. Yeah, yeah. You look beautiful as always. Thank you. Ne? I tried. I did this for you. Really? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I made an effort for you. I've never seen this tattoo. Tell me about it. Oh, this I, I little think, thing? Yeah, it's never really shown on TV. No, well, it's it's new. I didn't, oh, oh, when okay. we were shooting, I didn't have it. Sure. So this is basically... A representation, a representation of who I am. Okay. Um, in a sense that it has uh, our family totem, which is a ingonyama, a mm -hmm. lion, and this part where you see the eye is actually yeah. my eye. So it's basically saying that I am my ancestors before I am Musli. Mm -hmm. That is why I'm reflecting here, and the rose obviously reflects life, new birth, new beginnings, beauty. So and then. There's a cross as yeah, well, which yeah. represents prayer, because okay. I am a praying woman. You, as you may know or may not know, Ngum Tandas. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe maybe let's get into that. Who do you pray to sleep? Because a lot of people um, may be privy to the fact that you are spiritually connected, yeah. but they, it hasn't been broken down in a way that people understand. Like, yeah. who does Usli Njoku pray to? So I pray to Umbedi mm -hmm. God, the mm -hmm. God of our ancestors. Mm -hmm. I pray to the Almighty, the creator of all things living. Um, before I tap into, uh, before I speak to my ancestors, I believe that my ancestors are my angels. O Abraham Bami, O Chobi Bami, O David Bami. Sure. This is my lineage. These are the people that know who I am. So I pray to God, God who is the governor of everything else. So, Unkulunkulu Kala, Besen Elim Vome, Yogutin Bize, Amatong, Amnes Dalazagiti. That's how I pray. I mean, but there are people who say uh, when you involve ancestors, then Utugile, you're lost. Um, what do you have to say towards that? Because my explanation, what I get from you is that these people are your Abrahams. Yes. So, because the concept of ancestry is that it's just a person who lived the journey and then they've then gone on to be with God. Yes. So to you, you're saying because these people are from my lineage genetically, yes. they are my um, people who've gone on to be with God. Correct. Yeah. Correct. So for, for those people who feel that being 
or having this kind of understanding or view in terms of spirituality is a person that is lost. Um, shame, I, you know, I have no words um, except for pray for them as well so that they realize at some point you need to acknowledge your own. You can't tell me when they were living on earth, they were your parent and you loved them. Yeah. And once they've gone or passed on and moved on to be with God, now they're completely different people or they don't exist. And who, I mean, Abraham is much better than your own grandmother. For me, I find that weird. Why are you praying to the angels or the ancestors of the Jews where you could so, be praying to your own ancestors yeah. who understands your journey, who understand, who understand where you come from and whom you can communicate in a language that they understand because those are your angels and that's your line of contact to God to get to Unkulunkulu quicker. This is this is my belief, but each to their own. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, no fair. Uh, I, I don't want to dwell away much from the tattoo and how you explained it to me as an expression of your strength, as an expression of prayer, as an expression of your power. But there's a lot of people who perceive that people get tattoos as an expression of pain. Um, there is a pain they've gone through and there's a rebirth that they're trying to go through. Would you say there's any connection to you and that? Um, the fact of the matter is for us to be where we are, where I am today is not where I was a year ago, okay. right? You have to have gone through some kind of pain. Sure. You have to have gone through some kind of challenge in life. And with that being said, for me to realize my spirituality, I've had to go through the fire to know who I am. And just by virtue of that, this is how I came into understanding my journey with the spiritual world and who Usli is. And this is then what, you know, prompted me to get the tattoo. So you're not wrong. You have to have gone through some kind of pain yeah, yeah. in order for you. It's, it is a representation of rebirth. It's almost like if a woman cuts their hair. Yes. Well, that does not apply <laughs> to me. <laughs> <laughs> not, no, but that yeah. does not apply to me because my hair is forever short. short. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So, um, so I, I feel like you're right in saying that, and it, it is true. Would, would you then say, since a lot has changed in your life in the past year and you're going through a rebirth, that possibly that pain you went through towards the end of 2021 into last year is the most painful pain you've been through in your life? No, it's not. It isn't. No, it isn't. I think, um, I believe that, I've, I've got a saying that I always, you know, believe in where, I'm, where I am is exactly where I needed to be. Sure. And if, it, if not me, then who? Do you know what I mean? Uh, my life uh, has not been the easiest. Um, I know a lot of people can relate, but also I try not to share a lot about where I've been because also each person's journey is different. And I can't say to Umuntu, yeah, because I did this and I worked hard so you can also prevail because it also has everything to do with the chance and everything to do with Abanto Hambanabo being your angels, how much they want things done for you and how hard they're working in the spiritual world to get things done for you. So all I'm saying is that I've experienced worse pain. Yes. Um, I've experienced pain that I cannot even begin to describe. What happened to me? That uh, that was just... It, it's, Part it of was the more, journey. Yes, it was more of a disappointment than I anything. Hear you. Yes, yeah. yes. It's it's believing in something, believing in someone, and then they disappoint you. Yeah, which happens all the time. Absolutely. By the way, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. It happens. It happens all the time. Um, would you say now you're in a better space where you are, you have forgiven people and you've moved on? To be honest, I've never hated. Um, this specific person, mm. um, I have forgiven. And in a sense that um, some of the relationships that I decided, because when I was going through it, I blocked certain individuals because I did not want to see what was happening in that space. I needed my own time to heal, so I needed to disappear. Um, but when I reappeared, I knew that I was ready. I have held, I was ready to move on and tell my story and speak about it because I knew I was going to be asked about it. So I have forgiven and I have accepted the apology I've never received, which is okay. 
you know um sometimes you don't need closure and and that's okay as well i don't hate this person this person was a great you know part of my life for the past um couple of years and certain things that i've achieved now i would never achieve them if he was never part of my life so there's a lot of good it was just that the disappointment at the end it was so unexpected so sure, yeah. sure. and i i want to move on from this topic because it's not why we're here yeah um and and have you forgiven yourself because something that we often do in relationships and in in situations that are like that that are that involve the union of two people yeah is that we don't identify our toxicity yeah in why things don't, don't work, work out. out yeah have you taken time to evaluate find out what those toxicities were and move on from to that? be honest i have i have taken time um i am seeing someone um and it's a working progress i am not perfect and i'm not gonna sit here and act like oh i was this perfect little person and that's that that can't be it. it it takes two to get to a certain point um so i am working on my self in introspection and learning more about myself and as i said i keep evolving i keep changing and i've picked up certain things and certain traits that i think also added sure. to the strain yes um however having said that I also understand that it stems from my upbringing. As I said earlier, for me, this was not the actual thing that that I could say, oh my gosh. It's the most painful thing. It's the most thing. painful yeah, thing. Yeah. There are I've past been, traumas. Yeah. I've, there are past traumas that I had actually forgotten about them. Mm. Actually, until recently, I've there's certain things that I realized and I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that I went through this and I forgot about it. Something really hectic. And what, but when you start talking about things and unpacking things and understanding yourself, why am I like this? And why do I respond to certain situations the way that I do? Sure. Um, you then start thinking back and start unpacking things. And then you realize, hey, I've been dealing with things. <laughs> and, and, and as we as we move on, do you think that your your decision then to join um, a TV Obviously, I'm sure you were approached, yeah. but then to say yes to to, 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 to to now taking your life and making it public yeah. was part of the rebirth after that time of being out of the limelight. To be honest, Lungelo, I think it is part of my rebirth. And I think this is the best decision I made for myself because this pushed me to tap into things and to actually learn more about myself sure. it actually forced me to be you know being in an uncomfortable position an uncomfortable position forces one to to work harder to yeah. push more and to want to do better and this show is actually one of the reasons that has pushed me to a corner such that i've started now learning more about myself and wanting to do better. I've always been a person, and I always tell people, my friends know this about me, Mina, I don't, I'm not scared of a challenge. If anything, I dive in head first. Niti, I will swim, I'll figure out when I'm in there. That pushes me to, to do more, to progress and, and get to the next level. If I'm in a comfortable position, I then become lazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Speaking about your friends, would you say you have more genuine friends off camera than the friends that we know on camera? Um, I do have genuine friends, both off and on camera, okay. to be honest. Um, people, maybe people know how Libras are like. <laughs> we, we are very friendly people and the thing is we get drawn to like-minded people. And for you to be my friend, it doesn't take a day or two or years within a minute I, I know if you and I are going to form a relationship and because of how we engage and I, I do have very good friends on camera and some friends that are off camera I, I, I want to ask that because a lot of your friendships were challenged on camera so is, is, is it's not a reflection of you and how you handle friendships yes, yes. no it's not because um, certain instances for instance like um, the the, everybody knows my issue with Nongu. So that part, um, generally, if I go through something like that with a friend, I remove myself 
I don't go back to unpack issues, to talk about issues and try to fix things and try to get an understanding so that somebody admits if they're right. I just, I just cut my losses and I move on. But it, because that's, that's also one of the hardest parts about the show because you're living this life on camera. Um, so you have to live it and unpack it. And unfortunately, because the time is so limited, it's compacted in such a small time. So you don't even have time to deal with your emotions and, and actually try to comprehend and understand another person's point of view. Sure. So everything just happens. And when you get in there, it's real feelings, it's real emotions. And you're just dealing with all of that. And generally, though, if, if, if it were for me, I wouldn't even have shot with her like have a scene or any discussion with her on the show either with with georgia as well i wasn't even going to give them a time of day i was going to move on with my life and exist if i see them it's hey hey and and it's okay i mean this is what, how it is in real life yeah, yeah we go yeah. to events we see each other are we friends no mm -hmm. we see each other we cordial you say hi and we move on. We say hi and move on. We even take pictures <laughs> and smile. Yes. Because that's what normal people do. We don't hate each other. I don't sure. think they hate me. Yeah. Uh, I don't hate them. But the fact of the matter is I want you to do well. Mm. But over there. Yeah, yeah. 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 I get that. You can't be in my personal, personal space, space, within yes. my boundaries. Yeah. Um, just do well in your, in your, in your own yes. corner. Yes. Yeah. In your own corner. Um, as, as we continue, I, I just want to explore, since you say what you went through wasn't the most difficult situation and pain in your life, do you think you've been able to identify what's the most traumatic experience you've been through? Um, yes, I, 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 I have. Um, am I ready to share it? Mm -hmm. uh, no. <laughs> I, I did share it, though, with, with my partner, okay. the person that I'm seeing now recently, because... Um, we were going through something and then again I, I stopped and I had to think about my role in the whole situation sure. and not point fingers. That's when a light bulb moment hit me with oh no man. So it, it's too it's too fresh okay. if if I could you know, get into it, then shooting a yeah, 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 no, um, yeah, but I have identified it and I know where it stems from. Uh, but amongst other things, um, was a loss of my mother, uh, in 2001. I was, I was quite young. Very, it sounds like you were um, very young. I was very, very young. Yeah. I'm the eldest daughter, well, I'm the eldest child. Um, I had younger siblings, six. Um, so there's six of us, so I had five youngest. My youngest brother was two, going on three. So when my mom died, we had nobody else. Uh, it was just me. This is in Sassim Laz? This is Sassim Laz. Yeah. So I have had to take on that responsibility of raising my siblings. Um, be a mom to them, figure out to go to my journey. I mean, I was, I was a kid, too. Um... This is crazy to me. You you are taking on the responsibility of being a mother. I'm just juxtaposing this with going on to a show and people are making fun of you and cr trying to create a narrative about your finances, but they don't know your story. No, they don't. They don't know how deep it comes from yeah. and to be where you are, how much it has taken to be where you are. Thank you.